Guess who's back? Santa hat Stephanie. More importantly, Santa hat Stephanie also wearing her grumpy cat sweater, even though it's 2017 and grumpy cat's not really a thing anymore. But guess what? I paid for this sweater and I'm still gonna wear it. Probably already know why we're here today because you clicked on this video because you read the title and you wanted to watch it. But we're here to talk about the worst books I read in 2017, also known as the books that disappointed me the most and let me down. Maybe they were awful, maybe they just weren't what I wanted them to be, but these were books that were not an enjoyable reading experience for me. You may have enjoyed some of these books, and if you did, good for you. Guess who did not? The first book that disappointed me was a book I picked up because of the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge that said I had to read a book that was set in a hotel. So for this, I picked up Death at Breakfast by Beth Gutchen. And this, I think, is supposed to be the start of a series where two older ladies get together and solve murder mystery crimes. And that's just not really my thing. There were so many red flags that should have just told me that books like this are just not my thing. First of all, just the lack of characters with any dimension or depth. I feel like the author is scared to have their audience interpret whether someone is good or bad, so they just have to make it really obvious for you. And that was the case in this book. So people are checking into a hotel and they are being really rude and obnoxious. You know, like when you're watching like a cheesy movie, you know, someone throws their keys at a valet and says, be careful, it's a Ferrari. So you're reading it and you're like, well, that's the bad guy. Thank you for that. You could literally not make it any more obvious. Also, that person is probably going to die. And then we're supposed to feel conflicted about the person that killed them because they probably had good reason to. And I'm just like, I feel like these books are too scared to take any risks. And I just ultimately feel just really disappointed whenever I pick up books like this. And this just absolutely proved it right. These They're scared to write characters with any nuance. They're scared of any type of moral ambiguity. And it was just, I know. This book for me was just no, and just kind of no to this whole other side of mystery genre that is just not my thing, even though I keep trying and trying again. It's just not my thing. Number two. Anne Padgett is the only author to be simultaneously on my best of and my worst of list. So I read Commonwealth earlier this year and absolutely loved it. It was great. So side note, my grandma asked for a book recommendation and I recommended Commonwealth and she came back very upset and said it was way too depressing. So if that doesn't sound like something you'd like, maybe don't read it. So because I loved Commonwealth so much, I picked up her debut novel, The Patron Saint of Liars. And boy, was that a mistake. Everything about it was so blech. So this book takes place in the mid 20th century. We have a character who lives in California. She finds herself married to this guy that she doesn't really love and she gets pregnant and she just decides this isn't the life she wants. So she gets in her car, runs off and drives across the country and checks herself into a home in Kentucky for unwed mothers. And in this institution, basically, in, you know, mid 20th century, girls would get sent away to, to kind of wait out their shameful pregnancies, and then silently have their babies given away for adoption, and then be integrated again into society, you know, saying that they were like at an aunt's house, or that they went off to boarding school or something, you know, to not risk their reputation. And so this married woman drives there and checks herself into one of these homes and is just really secretive about her past. And I really failed to connect with her as a character and I realized that she's supposed to be a complicated character, but she was just so uninteresting. I mean, her decision to do this and the fact that she tried to be so mysterious about stuff about her past was the most interesting thing about her. She was just really vanilla and unlikable and she ends up liking it at this place and ends up staying there and kind of making a life for herself so this whole book I thought we were going to see her past catch up with her and we were going to see the repercussions of doing something so drastic and none of those things came to fruition I just felt like why did I waste so many hours with vanilla McBland pants 
nothing happened. I was so bored out of my mind. There was no, I don't know, I hated. it. Mm. The next book that just wasn't what I wanted it to be was Follow You Home by Mark Edwards. And this is a thriller. It's about a British couple who is taking a long vacation through Europe. They are in Eastern Europe and through a series of unfortunate events, they find themselves literally getting kicked off of a train and dropped in the middle of the Romanian forest to fend for themselves. If that didn't sound absolutely crazy enough, they stumble into a nightmarish scene in an abandoned house and walk miles into a city and see something horrific that when they finally do get back to England, they are so scarred forever that their relationship cannot survive what they went through together on this trip. This for me as a thriller was just so ridiculous and implausible. I just did not like it. The whole time I was reading it, I was like, you've got to be hitting me. I don't know. Sometimes this is an unpopular opinion, but I am under the opinion that most thrillers could be improved by just being horror. And if you're going to have something so ridiculously implausible, run with it. Make them see like ghosts or scary demons and then when they go back like no one believes them because of how crazy it is, but they have each other so like they both know that they saw this thing. That would have made a much better book instead of like the crazy stuff that happened that makes all of the Taken movies look realistic. Also, like, the motivations didn't add up for me. Like, the work that everyone was going to to make this large conspiracy work did not equal what the reason was behind this conspiracy. Like, it was very imbalanced. Like, the amount of effort people are going through to ruin these people's lives just did not add up for me. So I unfortunately said no. No. Next book for me, also a thriller, and one that I was really excited about, and this was The River at Night by Erica. I can't pronounce that last name. But I picked this book up because of the premise, because it sounded a lot like one of my favorite movies, The Descent. You have a group of women that are in their middle age and they're getting together for a girls trip like they usually do and they usually do something crazy and this year they decide to go to Maine to go white water rafting but something goes terribly wrong and they find themselves in like a survival situation. That sounds awesome. Unfortunately when I picked up this thriller I was, I don't know, for some reason under the impression that it was supposed to be thrilling. <sighs> First of all, one thing that The Descent does well is that it is just about the women. There is a man in the first scene and he dies within like five minutes of being on screen. And then we never see a man again, basically. And it is just about the relationship between these women. And that's what makes it great. It's just the insular nature of this. Unfortunately, they had to add a like hookup love interest that I thought was stupid. It was really slow. There was so much exposition. The characters were not likable. And it was just ridiculous. And I don't know if this is a thing with thrillers, but thrillers are supposed to be set in the real world and I can only suspend my disbelief so much. If I'm reading horror and there's supernatural elements involved, I am obviously willing to suspend my disbelief a lot more. Which is why I think most thrillers could just be improved by being horror. The ending to this, I thought was ridiculous. I didn't like it. It was slow. I was listening to this as an audiobook at work. And usually the thing with audiobooks is when a book is getting slow, if I'm listening to it as an audiobook at work, I am forced to like push through the slow parts because I'm doing work, but I'm still listening. There were so many times I was listening to this book where I took my phone out and I was tempted to just stop because I was so bored out of my mind, which should not happen with a thriller. Follow You Home was ridiculous and crazy, but it was fast paced the whole way through. It knew what it was. It knew that it was a thriller and it was fast paced and thrilling. This was not. So goodbye. And my most hated book of the year just really broke my heart because of how much I enjoyed it until the ending. That was an ending that made me grab this book and I physically threw it across the room because I was so angry. 
This was Revival by Stephen King. I'll put a picture here because I don't own that physical copy anymore. It's sitting at a Goodwill somewhere. Like I said, this book broke my heart because there was some great characters. We got to see them grow over time and change and the plot was amazing. We got to see the word revival just implemented in so many different ways and there were so many things explored and it was going so great until that last chapter. That last chapter ruined everything for me and frustrated me to no end. I have never been so mad while reading a book in my life. And a lot of people like this ending. I don't know why. It was terrible. I... <sighs> anyway, that was really it. Most of those were the books that just really let me down. Everything else while I was reading this year, if it was going down a path that I could not follow, I would just break up with it because I did not have time to waste my time with that. With these, I stuck it out thinking that maybe they would get better. They did not, unfortunately. Anyway, guys, what was the most disappointing book you read this year? What was a book that just really let you down or just really wasn't what you expected in a bad way? Like it was a bad surprise. Anyway, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.